dollar. Yes. Skip Bayless, could y'all hold on for a second, please? Okay. Skip Bayless, did you see us? Did you see the commercial during the break? First take. There's a Burger King commercial. And the Burger King commercial's got it's got it's, it's got something about the chicken on there and they're coming up with the new chicken fries combination. Uh -huh. That's my voice. You see somebody in there saying, calm down, that's me talking to you. It is. It's me talking to you. I'm trying to tell you, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Are you sure? It needs to be said. Y'all listen to the commercial. It, there's a voice the in there that's the one? chicken fries one, and you hear like the voice saying, calm down. That's me telling you to calm down during the first take one. I remember it as clear as is, yesterday. Is it taken right off our audio off the show? I, I, I think so. You didn't record I don't know. it. I did not record it. You did not. I just not. wanted to point that out. You need to cash in on I that. I just wanted so. to point that you Both think. You. you think. That's real money. It's got, that, that's me right here saying, calm down. Listen to it. One of these days. Just, just listen okay. to it. That's all I wanted to say. And, Let's and you're playing college football Let's now. There's, there's a lot going on. I mean, Burger King needs to tell me about that stuff. I like Burger King. Need to tell me about these things. Enjoy a good Whopper. How about that? All right. The word, on, so to skip, the word on the street is that there is a lot of tension that exists between Kirk Cousins and RG3 and that the two don't talk to each other. According to Bleacher Report, quote, they don't speak, they don't communicate, they can't be in the same room together. Griffin apparently took issue with the Bleacher Report story tweeting this Monday morning. When the hate don't work, they start telling lies. I guess celebrating that your team won with your teammates is isolating yourself. Hashtag hater. Stephen A., what's the deal? Well, the deal is, is that I hate subjects like this from the perspective of, unlike most folks in today's world and in our industry, I don't like making a habit of talking about other people's report. I respect my colleagues in this profession, etc. But I must admit, when I saw it, I didn't think much of it because I saw RG3 go up to Kirk Cousins on the field and wish him luck prior to the game against St. Louis yep. on Sunday. Then in the aftermath of it, and in the aftermath of this report, I had people close to RG3 telling me, that's nonsense. There's no truth to that whatsoever. Of course, RG3 is a competitor. Of course, he wish he was starting. Of course, he wishes he were, com he, were, he were playing. And that's a natural emotion to have. But it's not like he's sitting out there wishing Kev uh, Kirk Cousins bad luck, hoping that the team loses, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, they, and they believe this to be just another shot at the personal integrity and character of RG3. I'm not about to go that far with the report. I don't know the report, and even if I did, I'm certainly not going to call him out like that. He's got a job to do, and if that's what he's hearing, that's what he's hearing, and we have to respect that. I would tell you that people in RG3's camp are categorically denying it, and there's nothing that I've seen, albeit I'm not at the game, it's the cameras, yep. and I'm not in the locker room like this reporter is and all of that stuff. I, I would tell you it doesn't seem to be that way. At the end of the day, here is what I think is undeniable. And I always lean towards this reality, Skip, because what Joe Public needs to understand is that it is very, very rare in the history of our industry that somebody is just going to make something up and say it. They're usually being told that yep. by somebody. Sure. Now, whether it's true or not is another matter, but actually being told it, I definitely think that's highly likely, which would lend itself towards the thought that there are still dudes in that locker room who do not like RG3. Mm -hmm. There are still guys in that locker room who wish he'd go away. There are still guys in that locker room who are ecstatic that Kirk Cousins, or anybody for that matter, is the starting quarterback for the Washington Redskins other than RG3, which to me lends itself towards the argument that the Redskins should have just let him go mm. and RG3 should move on because it's clear that he does not appear to have much of a future in the nation's capital. Okay. I believe this report. I'm not surprised by this report and it doesn't bother me one bit because it's predictable that Robert would not exactly warm up to Kirk Cousins. Isn't that just par for that course. Yeah, but, but I'm not refuting that because that's the competitor in you. Yeah. But to say they're not talking, they've, they, they've got it out for one another, they're not even speaking, they can't be in the same room together. I think that's the extra stuff 
that is being categorically denied. I don't think anybody would deny your point that you've got any kind of pride or dignity about you, any competitive fervor in you. You're not going to be happy about the fact that you're being benched in favor of your backup. Just remember, three years ago, you know, back to his rookie year, Robert Griffin III became as big a football star in D.C. as maybe they've ever had for a short span. I mean, was he not it in, in as football crazy a, an area as you'll find in this country, right? Yeah. So he experienced the idolatry of that. And maybe it got to him a little bit. Maybe he didn't react that well to it as he began to brand himself that offseason through the rehab. You, we've talked and talked about it. But given all that, it's pretty difficult than to buddy up to the guy who's going to usurp you, who's going to take your, who has taken your job. Now, that's hard. That's that's a tough one. Used to, I don't remember if you did it, but a lot of people criticized Brett Favre for cold shouldering Aaron Rodgers in his first three years as he tried to figure out how to be a pro football player right. as they rebuilt his whole delivery and style. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I, I didn't. It's just Favre. He's a competitor. He he doesn't want anybody to come in and snatch his job out from under him. Yeah, you have a good point there, but I think that. You have to remember a couple of things. I think that your focus on what RG3 is experiencing emanates from the RG3 brand, how he was conducting himself once stardom hit him as a member of the Washington Redskins, etc. You know what I remember most? I remember his performance uh, in his last year at Baylor. I remember after he played that terrific game when he said, I think I won the Heisman. It's Texas. And then I yep. remember him coming on mm -hmm. this show, yep. being on that big screen, mm -hmm. talking to you. That is correct. And validating the fact that that's how he felt. So long and I asked before, him, I said, are you sure you didn't right, alienate right, some right, voters right, by right. saying, I think I just yeah, won the Heisman. Were, you and I weren't doing the show yeah. together religiously right, right. at that time. We were just on together on Wednesdays. And it was that day that he was on, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. And what I'm, I'm bringing that up to point out this, Skip. RG3 had an ego about him long before sure. he arrived in Washington. Now, that doesn't mean that it was a negative because you got to have that to play the quarterback. Absolutely. And he backed it up. And, and he backed it up. The flip side is, is that you were backing it up and here's the dangerous part that needs to be said about somebody in his position you can't be a successful quarterback in the nfl by yourself on the nba level you can't win without your teammates but you can be an individual success without your teammates perfect example would be carmelo anthony carmelo anthony the knicks stink we all know that but carmelo anthony is a star he's one of the top five greatest offensive players of the modern day generation yep. so even though the knicks stink up the joint on a on a, a religious basis it's undeniable that Carmelo Anthony is a big time talent worthy of the star studded status he enjoys. You can't pull that off on the NFL at the quarterback spot. You can't be RG3 and accomplish all the things you accomplished as a rookie had it not been for that offensive line, had it not been for Mike and Kyle Shanahan and the way they employed their system to facilitate you, had it not been for the receivers playing alongside you along with the running backs that you had. So when you were about brand RG3 at that particular moment in time although i believe he's a good person and i believe that he's taken far too many hits that he deserves on a personal level i agree with you it cannot be denied that he brought a lot of it on himself sure. because he forgot that he didn't get here by himself he got here because of those very teammates who clearly felt forgotten because if they didn't feel forgotten skip they wouldn't still be harboring the level of animosity that they once had for okay i agree now, last quick point from our Ryan Clark, who's often on this show, mm -hmm. who knows Robert very well and likes the heck out of That's Robert. Right. I know that from off camera. Mm -hmm. He's made the, the point that remember that Robert in high school was a track star first, a track star more than a football star. Right. He was big time. He was world class. Mm -hmm. And it makes you a solo act in track. Obviously, it's not a team sport. Mm -hmm. So his mentality is a little bit it, it's self-centered, not in a bad way, but it's you, you internalize because mm -hmm. it's just you against the world. Mm -hmm. And some of that is showing itself here, where he's not one of the fellas mm -hmm. as much as maybe some quarterbacks are. Well, the reason why I would not use that as an excuse is because he played enough football prior to arriving in the NFL for that not to be an excuse. You've been involved in enough team activity to know sure. better, number I'm one. I'm just telling you, it's nature. I, I agree. Just, I, yeah, I feel yeah. you. And the other part about Ryan Clark, let me point this out close the segment with this. I wouldn't put much credence 
in Ryan Clark's relationship with a player. Let me tell you why. Ryan Clark's a different cat. He's very personable. He's very communicative. Uh, he's straight up. So it's pretty difficult for, for somebody to be aloof or dismissive of him because he ain't having it. You see what I'm saying? And he will confront you, whereas other guys would tend to just dislike you from afar, mm -hmm. keep their distance from you, not really make an effort to ingratiate themselves with you or to be personable with you. So they'll just des de designate you as not that great of a guy and they okay, could care less about you. But mm -hmm. Ryan Clark, yeah. he's the kind of person that he'll be around you enough where he's personable he can have that kind of impact or if he don't like you it would be in your best interest to change that because it'll be in your detriment to have ryan clark that as an enemy correct. if you're on the same team you see what i'm saying ryan clark is his own man mm -hmm. right and if he gets bad vibes from you that's and decides right. you're not the right kind of that's guy that's right you're out that's right and, and rg3 ain't he's not a dummy now yep. he might sit there and look at a ryan clark and be like I don't need to get on his bad side. <laughs> okay. You see my boy? That's how that works. Yep. You know what I know about the Redskins? They're one and one. Right. You know what the Giants and Eagles are? Oh and two. I will say this. Redskins. Matt defense. Jones. Jay Gruden deserves some credit. Their defense is looking good right now. They really are. Okay, really Listen, just me. I'm going to put this in some quick perspective. Yeah, sure. I think they took advantage of a, a much overrated Dolphins team in the opener. Mm -hmm. It came down to a punt return by the Dolphins, 17 to 10 Dolphins. Right. Close game. Right. And then they caught the St. Louis Rams after an emotional home opening victory over arch rival Seattle and they did not take the Redskins seriously enough in week two with Pittsburgh coming back to St. Louis in week three. It was a trap game and they got trapped by the Redskins. So I'm not sure about the Redskins yet. Yeah, but I, that St. Louis they're defense they're better. something we'll that see. we were raving about. I can't ignore that. Division's up for grabs. Guys, how about Alabama? For the first Ugh. time since 1988, they lost at home to Ole Miss. What does this tell you about Nick Saban? We will dive wow. into that subject. Here's your guy, Stephen A. Yes, he is.